Hi again, Mark here from Talking Bass. So, if you're starting out as a bass player, I'm sure you'll have been told that you need to learn your scales. And yes, the basic major and minor scales are important when it comes to learning the fundamentals of music. But in terms of stuff that you can apply in your everyday playing, it's actually way more important to learn about chord tones. Now, you beginners out there might be thinking, chord tones? Why do I have to learn about chords? I'm a bass player. We don't play chords. Well, most of the time, no, we don't play chords, but we do play bass lines through chord progressions. So it's important to learn what notes fit with those chords. And to do this, you need to learn arpeggios. Today, we'll work through the two most common arpeggios, major and minor, and have a little look at how they can apply in a bass line setting. As always, the lesson material is all there over at TalkingBass.net. Just click the link in the info below. Also, like the video, subscribe to the channel, and leave a comment below. Then, remember to check out the totally free membership over at Talking Bass. Talking Bass is now a complete social network for bass players. Just log in, and you'll be able to connect with over 100,000 other bass players from all over the world in the forums, groups, and chat rooms. It's very much like Facebook, but for bass players, but with the addition of over 450 free bass lessons, a ton of free practice resources, and a set of ebook downloads such as the Scale Reference Manual. Then, if you want to take things further, there's all the premium courses on everything from beginner bass to reading music to scales, chord tones, slap bass, ear training, and much, much more. So sign up today, remember it's totally free, and join a great bass community. Okay, so let's start with the major arpeggio. The major arpeggio is made up of a root note, a major third, and a perfect fifth interval, all measured from that root note. Now, don't worry too much about that for now if you don't know your intervals. Just look to get the notes under your fingers. So if we build a C major arpeggio, we'll be playing the notes C, E, and G. So we'll stick with a simple single fingering for today that looks like this. Okay, so just those three notes there. So we've got C, third fret of the A string, then we've got the E, the second fret of the D string, and the G, the fifth fret of the D string. So you want to play up and back down that, just those three notes. C, E, G, E, C. That is the C major arpeggio. From a technical standpoint, in terms of the hands, for the left hand, you can use the second finger, first finger, fourth finger. So. One, two, three, four, second, first, fourth, or middle, index, pinky, okay? In terms of the right hand, the picking hand, you can just use one finger, you know, you could use the, the first finger for all of that, but if you want to alternate uh, the fingers, you know, if you're gonna be getting, if you're gonna be getting a little quicker, you wanna start with the first finger, the index finger, and just alternate the fingers. So one, two, one, two, one, two, round and round, okay? so. The only important thing you need to know there is the starting finger. So we're starting on the index finger. Once you have that arpeggio under your fingers, just try playing it up and down a few times. And then you can try a very simple exercise of playing it up and down the fretboard, chromatically, one fret at a time. So we start with C major. Then just move the whole thing up one fret to C sharp. Then up another fret to D, and just keep going and keep going until you get all the way up to the C here at the 15th fret of the uh, of the A string there. So that's that first fret marker past the 12th fret. So the whole exercise there. Keeping the same fingering as I work up. So there I've got up to that C and then we can come back down. Okay, so that's the exercise. So, you know, pretty mindless. We're just going up and down there, but I can guarantee that by the time you've got up there and then got back down, you'll have got that fingering under your fingers. As well as playing with the root note on the A string, you could take it all down onto the E string. So we could start on a G major arpeggio, for instance, there, starting at the third fret there of the, uh, of the E string, and then perform the same exercise. All the way up and down, you know, just work through it. 
Now let's move on to the minor arpeggio. Now the minor arpeggio is the same as the major arpeggio, but we have a minor third instead of a major third. So we simply drop that second note in there on the major arpeggio down a half step. So let's try that. So if we take the C major arpeggio again, so that was C, E and G, or the third, the E, which is the second note in the arpeggio, so that E, we drop it down a half step, which just means one fret, basically. So we drop it down there to E flat, so C, E flat and G. So that's one fingering that you could use for it. Third fret, A string, first fret, D string, and then fifth fret on the, the D string, but the most common fingering for this would be starting with the first finger there on uh, the C at the third fret, and then playing the E flat at the sixth fret of the A string. So third fret, sixth fret on the A string, C, E flat, and then the G there again at the fifth fret of the D string. So third fret, sixth fret A string, fifth fret on the D string. That's the minor arpeggio. So C major, and C minor. Notice how the major arpeggio is nice and Happy and the minor is much more sad. Again, in terms of the technique for the minor arpeggio, I'm using the first finger, fourth finger, and then the third finger. So index, pinky, and then the ring finger. And on this hand, the picking hand, instead of starting with the uh, first finger, I'm actually starting with the second finger. So starting with the middle finger. So for the major, I started on index finger. And then for the uh, minor, start on the uh, middle finger. It just helps with the movement across the strings. So just as with the major arpeggio, you can try that same exercise working up and down the fretboard. So from the C minor, we have C sharp, D, just all the way up. Etc. all the way up to C, and then all the way back down. And then you can try on the E string as well. Again, all the way up and down. So now as an example of how arpeggios can be the key to developing our bass lines and understanding how other bass lines work, let's take a simple chord progression of C major, F major, G major, and back to C. So C, F, G, and back to C. Now, if I was to play through that progression using only the root notes, C, F, and G, we might have something like this. Okay, so that's just the root notes. C, F, G. But if we were to actually use the arpeggios that we've learned, so the, the major arpeggio for each one of those, we could play through, the, uh, through that chord progression like this. Okay, so I'm just playing the C major arpeggio, then the F major, G major, and back to C. Now, obviously, you don't need to be playing full arpeggios for every chord progression that you play along to. These arpeggios are simply a basic palette to work from, and you can learn how to use those extra notes, the third and the fifth there, in isolation. So I might just use the root and fifth. Or I could use the root and the third. Now, obviously, root notes are fine on their own, but by using the notes of the arpeggios there, you have more options. Not a huge amount of options, but it's a start, and arpeggios are the framework that we build upon when adding all the extra scale notes in there. Now, as an example of the minor arpeggio, let's just play through that same progression again, but let's switch each chord to minor. So we're gonna have C minor, F minor, and G minor. So if we play the arpeggios through that sequence, you'll get the following. C minor, F minor, G minor, C. So, notice there how you can hear the actual chord qualities. If I play the major chord progression followed by the minor chord progression, it becomes even more obvious. So here it is major. And now minor. So 
So we can hear the actual chord qualities in there, the major and the minor, rather than when we just play the, uh, the root notes. You know, there, you know, that would work fine most of the time because the other instruments in the band are, you know, will probably be playing the, uh, the, the actual chords, you know, a guitarist or a keyboard player, they'll be playing the chords in there. But in terms of creating a melodic bass line, that's what you want to be aiming to do outline the chord progression. So, you know, just using root notes, you're not really outlining anything but the root movement. But if you play... I'm outlining the chord progression. Those two arpeggios, major and minor, are the most basic and common triads that you're likely to encounter. So they're important learning for any bass beginner. Play around with them, play them up and down the neck, try playing through some chord progressions, and add some of those extra chord tones, the third and the fifth there, into the mix. Once you have them under your fingers, you'll also start to see those shapes in the bass lines for loads of songs. And once you can recognize those arpeggios in application, you'll start to understand how other bass players write those bass lines. Okay, so please like, comment, subscribe to the channel, and follow the link below for more lessons and videos. Then sign up to the Talking Bass Network, a membership to gain access to a massive community of like-minded bass players, and a ton of bass practice resources and downloads. Okay, I'll see you next week.